deck is ruined! Whatever happened to fill in the blank with your favorite missing munchie? These old school snacks have long since disappeared from shelves, but that doesn't mean they've been forgotten. Here are the top 15 discontinued snacks that Americans miss the most, part two. Now bring them back. Bring them back. Squeeze it, drinks. Okay, everyone, squeeze in. Squeeze-It drinks are an artifact of a time when juice came in clear plastic packaging for all the world to see. It was a novelty that picked up steam with the original iteration in the form of Little Hug juice barrels, which were exactly what they sounded like. On the back of this success, several other companies popped up, attempting to cash in on the trend. The most popular of these sugary drinks were Squeeze-Its. They took the original design idea and ramped it up, leaning into colorful marketing designed especially for kids. Little kids? Well, sure, it's for little kids. While you'd be hard-pressed to find these colorful, skinny bottles of juice in stores today, we can always remember the nostalgia that came along with twisting one of these strange juices open. I'm squeezing. I'm squeezing it. Space Dust. Candy! Candy! Space Dust was an imitator of the popular candy Pop Rocks, which had already taken the world by storm many years before. In response to this wave of success, Space Dust was a very similar candy in a somewhat different package. Whereas Pop Rocks come in shapes akin to little rocks, Space Dust chose to pulverize their candy into a fine dust that had many of the same qualities. It's my own modification. It popped in your mouth, fizzled on the tongue, and had many of the same flavor characteristics that Pop Rocks had. There was a slight backlash from parents who saw this item on store shelves. People were none too happy about their kids clamoring for a mysterious candy dust that resembled a controlled substance. Space Dust took this criticism in stride for a few years, but eventually pulled their product from store shelves in order to cut their losses. Quick, Plan B! Plan B! Watermelon Laffy Taffy. Is Taffy a name? While most people know Laffy Taffy from the fun size bars they get in their Halloween bags, Wonka actually makes full size versions in a variety of different flavors. One such flavor was watermelon. Artificial watermelon has always been a popular flavor with many candy makers, and chances are you could easily pick the flavor out of a lineup. What made this particular candy so striking was the candy seeds that were stuck directly into the taffy. This gave the appearance of a slice of watermelon complete with little black pearls of candy. One watermelon oh, fresh from the manure field. It's unclear as to why the Wonka brand decided to discontinue the snack. Some people claim that the seeds caught people off guard and posed a serious choking risk, and others still say that it just wasn't all that popular. I just know that you were popular like I was. Surge. Fact, you were drinking grape soda. You never drink grape soda. Many soft drinks have come and gone in American history, but few have had the cultural impact and reach that Surge saw when it first came on the market. Surge was a citrus-flavored soda that was designed by the Coca-Cola company to compete with Pepsi's Mountain Dew. While it never enjoyed the success that Mountain Dew did, it still developed quite the cult following in the early 90s. Nice try. It was originally launched in Norway, but after its success overseas, the Coca-Cola company decided to launch it in the U.S., and it did so with a $50 million marketing campaign. But despite all the advantages it enjoyed in this department, people just weren't buying it at the rate that Coke had hoped. It was discontinued in 2003, and the last remaining cans of Surge were emptied from vending machines everywhere. In recent years, fans on social media have clamored for its re-release, and much to their surprise, it worked. Sort of. While you probably won't see Surge on store shelves, it can be enjoyed in Coca-Cola freestyle machines, which populate fast food counters, movie theaters, and and food courts around the country. Great. Glad to hear that. Trix yogurt. Oh, that's a lot of yogurt. I love yogurt. Cereal brand Trix, famous for its rabbit mascot, decided to expand their breakfast game by offering their own version of yogurt. This particular brand offered a simple novelty that people went absolutely crazy for. Two sides of the cup were divided with one of the many different fruit flavors that came in Trix cereal. For a while, the brand enjoyed success. It didn't take long for people to dig into the nutritional facts and find that the yogurt was packed with nearly as much sugar as the cereal it took its name from. So, you think it's a scam? Sales began to dip, and sooner rather than later, this yogurt retreated from store shelves into our collective memory. 
It's super sad. Outwitting the Trix Rabbit is easy, but not as easy as hitting that subscribe button to become an official Babble Topper. So if you're new to the channel, go ahead and smash it. Thanks. Icebreakers Liquid Ice. Is it liquid or is it ice? Both. The early 2000s were a kind of revolution for established brands in the snack space. Many had rested on their laurels for years and wanted new levels of success. Icebreakers was no different. In 2003, they released one of the stranger items on our list, Liquid Ice. These were tiny orbs of liquid that were encased in a thin minty shell. When you put them in your mouth, the thin shell would dissolve and wash your mouth in a minty explosion. People didn't quite get it at first and wondered who this product was geared to. People were using them for all sorts of strange and nefarious reasons, and on the back of these developments, the icebreakers companies saw that they had invited a certain amount of liability into their brand. As a result, icebreakers pulled them from shelves, never to be seen again. I'll go bankrupt. Altoid Sours Sour candy, just like you like it. Not satisfied with their current level of success, Altoids decided to break away from mints by coming up with Altoid Sours. These were little cherubs of hard candy that resembled sour fruits, and they were all the rage. Until they weren't. Many people tend to store mints in their car, pockets, and purses, and it turned out that these sour candies had a real problem with heat associated with these places. They would fuse together and create one massive globule of sour candy. People enjoyed Altoid Sours, but like many of the other items we've seen, they never rose to their minty predecessor's success. All the Altoids. He was here one night. Pizzerias. Pizza time. If you're a 90s kid, then chances are that this next snack needs no introduction. Pizzerias were a strange creation made by the Keebler company that involved using fresh pizza dough to create a cracker-like product that resembled a miniature slice of pizza. Snack lovers found pizzerias to be nothing short of delicious, and sales soared. But there was trouble brewing on the horizon. Why are you causing so much trouble? In the late 90s, the Keebler company was bought and broken up into its various divisions, selling its off to the highest bidders. As a result, pizzerias slipped through the cracks as no one seemed confident enough to tackle this strange snack. The cracker was discontinued, much to the chagrin of snackers everywhere. Ha <laughs> ha! I miss her too. Pillsbury Waffle Sticks the Waffles, tasty waffles with lots of syrup. Taking a trip back to the breakfast table, Pillsbury Waffle Sticks were created in response to instant breakfast options like Pop-Tarts and Eggo Waffles that were cornering the market. Pillsbury was already heavily entrenched in the baking scene and saw these waffle sticks as a natural extension of their already famous pastries. For more profit? <laughs> waffle sticks came in a frozen block that you would then heat up in the toaster or microwave before ripping off the perforated sticks and dunking them in syrup or icing. This one is a bit of a mystery as to why it's no longer around, as a quick Google search will show you that everyone seemed to love them. Maybe it was production issues, or maybe the sticks weren't turning a profit, but one thing is for sure, people still hold out hope that Pillsbury Waffle Sticks will grace grocery store shelves once again in the future. Well, my dream will be lost forever. Kudos. Breakfast bar, go ahead, take one. Breakfast bars were all the rage in the early 2000s for people who had less and less time for the most important meal of the day. Kudos offered a simple solution to this problem – simply eat your breakfast on the go. While other brands leaned heavily into the breakfast approach, Kudos was content to be an anytime snack, pairing with companies like M&M's, Snickers, and Dove Chocolate. The focus of the bar was to offer a granola base that would serve as the breakfast bedrock. Kudos completely upended this healthy start by adding copious amounts of chocolate and candy to make it nothing more than a candy bar. Sorry, that was rude. Candy bar? In 2017, the Mars company announced publicly that Kudos would be discontinued, and as of their last public statement on the matter in 2020, there are still no plans to revive the beloved snack. What plan? There's no plan. Rolled Gold Honey Mustard Tiny Twist they got to get honey mustard twice. Rolled Gold is probably the most popular purveyor of pretzels and pretzel derivative snacks, and at one point in time, one of their flagship offerings was that of the Honey Mustard Tiny Twists. 
Tiny Twists had been on the market for many years at this point in a variety of flavors, but none were quite as popular as the honey mustard variety. When these pretzels were pulled from store shelves, people were left scratching their heads. What's so offensive about honey mustard? While we may never get the answer, it's clear that people were passionate about this particular flavor. I like to apologize for the behavior of my passion. Dino Egg Oatmeal Dinosaur Egg if you grew up in the 90s, chances are that you were swept up in the dinosaur craze that followed the release of the blockbuster film Jurassic Park. Based on the novel by Michael Crichton, this Steven Spielberg-helmed movie created a new wave of dino aficionados. With rising trends comes the opportunity for marketing, and that's exactly what Quaker Oatmeal hoped to cash in on. Dino Egg Oatmeal was a cultural icon, and kids everywhere loved it. Tiny little dinosaur eggs came in the instant mix of oatmeal that Quaker had made their name on. Quaker chose to discontinue the product and consumers let out a collective groan. It was clear that Quaker had made a mistake. It wasn't until years later that the product would return for a victory lap. People raced to the store to claim their own box of this zany oatmeal, but consumers were shocked to find that the nostalgia they had craved was not found in this new version. Had something changed with the recipe, or had absence simply not made hearts grow fonder? It's not the same! Dunkaroos Chowing down on Dunkaroos this next one is one of the most beloved snacks to come out of the 90s. Dunkaroos were an invention by Betty Crocker and were small snack-sized packages that came complete with shortbread-like cookies and a small container of frosting. As the name implies, these cookies were meant to be dunked into the sprinkle-laden frosting. Kids went bananas for this strange creation, and it was clear that the company had a winner on their hands. They enjoyed significant success through the 90s and into the early 2010s when they were finally retired. Me? Retire? Sometimes it's best to go out on top, and we can't help but wonder if the folks at Betty Crocker knew this. They have since re-released for limited times, but it would seem as though the magic has gone, perhaps left in the 90s with their original wave of success. It makes me miss the 90s. Hershey Swoops I want Hershey Kiss nipples, and I want you to pay for them! Instead of staying in their candy lane, Hershey's decided that the early 2000s were a time for experimentation. Enter Hershey's Swoops, a Pringle-shaped candy that looked more like a potato chip than chocolate. They came in a number of varieties, including Reese's Peanut Butter, Strawberries and Cream, White Chocolate Peppermint, and Special Dark with Almonds. Swoops enjoyed some success upon their release, but with so many niche candies on the market, it was difficult for the Hershey's company to draw attention to this unique offering. Sales dipped over the years until they were finally pulled from the market in August of 2006. Hershey's was so concerned with whether or not they could make swoops, they didn't stop to think if they should. Already regretting this. Yay! Flintstones push-ups. Count the last one. Okay, 25 and one girl push-up. Introduced in 1990, the Cadillac of 90 snacks had arrived on the scene. The Flintstones were already a popular TV cartoon household name, so what do you do when you're riding on the back of a titan of success? Well, you sell frozen treats, of course. Push-ups were exactly what they sounded like, a paper tube filled with sherberty goodness that you needed to slowly push up as you devoured it. The orange sherbet push-up is regarded as one of the most popular ice cream snacks of all time, and unfortunately, we'll never taste them again. We don't know if it was the grinning face of Fred Flintstone on the packaging that made them such a hit, or simply a good recipe, but unfortunately, we'll never get the chance to find out. We need to find out who we're dealing with. Got a favorite you miss? Let us know. And check out part one of this video. Just tap or click. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell.